So heading down to LA. Deadlift competition in a couple days. Gonna hang with the homies for the rest of the week. As we talked about, I'm not that excited to compete, but I am excited to come kick it with the homies. So um, started the weight cut, started uh, losing some poundages. I was about 202 the night before, Thursday night before Connor and I left. I was fairly committed to making 198, but I didn't want to sweat it out. I didn't want to actually do a full water cut. I just thought I'd cut some carbs and see what happened um, and just slowly lose it. You can be a designer. Like, dude, this zipper ain't cutting it. Look, dude, we're gonna make a lot of money here on YouTube, you and I. Eh? You smile at that camera so we can get these likes, all right? You handsome little W. Who's your favorite uncle? Who's your favorite uncle? Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike. He's the one that's gonna give you your first beer when you're 12. He's gonna teach you how to get the ladies. He's gonna teach you how to lift some weights. Teach you how to play the basketball. All that. All the fun things come to Uncle Mike. You know, I bet Uncle, Uncle David's probably pretty fun too. Uncle Mike and Uncle David, we'll show you the way. Nothing, dude. Just teaching lessons, life lessons. About what? Nothing, dude. Drive was easy, one stop, grab some food, rolled into to downtown, tried to uh, meet up with some of the homies, grab the Airbnb, which we stayed at before. Super easy, super convenient. Uh, key lock, don't mess with anybody. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bing, boom, boom, boom. As an athlete, as some of you guys hopefully saw the video with Dean Stark that I did before my basketball coach, he taught me at an early age kind of about preparation and processes. Building a process into um, success, preparation into success, preparation into at least being able to do your best in everything you do. And also further as an adult, I've read and listened to different podcasts and people talk about flow state. I didn't understand what flow state was until I was older, probably within the last couple of years. But um, some of my memories going back in time while I played basketball, flow made so much sense to me. Um, don't listen to my definition of flow because it's going to be butchered and messed up. But for me, flow is a state in which you, you know, time is slow and fast at the same moment. You, you lose yourself so into whatever activity you're doing. Uh, for me, I think it's easiest when you're very skillful at whatever you're doing and then you just literally let the creativity or let that skill do itself. Uh, my best example is I can teach a lot of you guys how to dribble a basketball through the legs, but for you to do it in a game, you're going to think ahead of time, defender there, dribble ball through my legs. Rather than if you played basketball your whole life and you, dribbling through your legs is just unconscious, then when you're going in the game and that defender goes to for a steal, you'll just go through the legs. It just happens. That's like, uh, you know, the micro of what a flow state is. And then you, you do that over and over and over and you just let your skills paint on the court. And you're, you're, just, you're, just, you're just along for the ride. Your body, your mind, and your skills are so attached that they're doing everything and your consciousness is just cruising along with it. Uh, I think that can happen in almost anything. Uh, it's happened maybe a couple times with me for lifting where I like trained for two hours and I didn't even know it. I was just like, like crushing deadlifts, rest, mind still so focused, crushing deadlifts, rest. But that's very rare. Uh, it's happened sometimes with writing or programming or working, uh, where sometimes I'm just doing research or, or I'm writing programming and, and the, the clock, it, I look back up and it's like midnight. I started at nine. I don't know what happened. My mind was just working. I think it's very common among artists, um, people that paint, edit, film, um, draw, pottery, whatever it might be, that they can really get into a flow state and they're just so absorbed in what they're doing and their skills are just unleashed while their body and their mind and everything's connected. Um, so to get into the flow state a little bit better, whether it's competing or preparation and maybe not an even flow because I think flow is so particular and I know there's a lot of research and people that are really into it and how to get in and out of it. Um, but even just to do your best in something, I like to build a process. So whether that's shoot a video, um, you know, maybe it's the day before me and Connor talk about a concept. Then in my mind, I visualize what I'm going to talk about broadly. I almost, I'm not that good at writing, but I'm pretty good at making notes in my head. So I'll make like four key points I want to hit. And then if it's a complicated video, I'll actually write down notes within those four key points. If not, <clears throat> I like to just do it on the spot um, because a lot of things that we talk about are one experiences or about my life. So I don't need to like study those things. I want them to be organic and just let them come out of me or two. They're about training, which is something I'm super confident in, you know, training, nutrition, strength and conditioning, things that I've done for 10 years and studied so well, I think that I'm best at just expressing it on the spot and expressing it. And that's where I think my gifts as maybe a content creator or coach come that I feel so confident in these things.
So that's kind of the process for that. And then I'm sure Connor has a process where he uploads the video or maybe he'll drink a cup of coffee, upload the video, make sure that the, his music's playing, whatever it might be. But if you build a process with everything and then it's the release of the videos, there's a process as well. You know, there's a, uh, a time to, all right, we're going to put it on YouTube. Then I'm going to put it on Instagram. Then I'm going to put it on Facebook. Then I'm going to share it on Twitter and then I'm going to comment. And then an hour later, I'm going to go check on the YouTube and answer all your guys' comments. That's kind of a process as well. Um, a process to stay organized, a process to stay productive, and a process to give yourself the best chance to succeed. And so I have the same thing with, um, you know, the meet. Uh, I have my boy Justin Kalkin competing, uh, and I told him like, look, dude, I want to be there for you, but I also want to do well. So I'm going to uh, go through my process of getting myself ready to lift, and then I'm going to be there as soon as I can to watch you lift and, and do your best. Although I'm trying to take this meet uh, a little less serious and try to have some fun, I still want to be mentally prepared. So then. You control the variables you can. So if I can't control what happens to the meter, maybe if my body's not ready or whatever, I can control my mental state and be ready to compete when I need to compete. And that's kind of the whole ideal of this process. You can't control all the variables. Connor can't control if the footage or the card goes corrupt, but if he controls every process in between and lays it out perfectly and stays organized, then he minimizes those chances of these little shit things happening. And even if these shit things happen, the card goes corrupt or we lost footage or the camera wasn't right, then he knows that he did everything he could and then that one thing happened wrong. And that's very like just what sports is. You do everything in your, in, in your power to get ready, to practice, to prep as well as you can physically and mentally. And then what happens on game day, not everything can go perfect, but you also can't control everything. So you do as much as you can to control. And then we know we can point to this happened because of this. And that's the same thing I like to do in life. You try to control your mindset. You can try to control your habits. You, try, you can control who's around you. You can control who you hang with, where you send your energies. And then bad things will happen in life. But you know why, how, and you know how to avoid them by setting up these processes. Or at least how to minimize them by setting up these processes. So uh, second day in LA, we had weigh-ins. Uh, typically, depending on the federation powerlifting you do, there's two-hour weigh-ins or there's 24-hour weigh -ins. There's two hour weigh-ins or 24 hour weigh-ins. This competition is 24 hour weigh-ins. So I lift on Sunday, we weighed in Saturday morning. Um, I think between nine, 10 30, I showed up around 10. It was, uh, the gym was packed and the energy was good, but the line for weigh-ins was short. So weighed in real quick. Uh, I ended up uh, the night before not deciding not to cut. I did a quick weigh-in at the gym, um, an unofficial weigh-in and I weighed 207 with my clothes on. I don't know if that was a misread or if I kept my keys in or what, but I was like, that's too heavy. I don't actually want to cut because the plan was to not eat. Uh, then I said, screw it. Uh, we went to Bart's house, had a cool bonding time, just had the homies there, uh, ate dinner, hung out. Uh, and so I didn't want to make the full cut. I said, if I weigh in a little heavy, I'll go 220. I don't really care. So grab some ice cream, chilled, weighed in officially the next morning at 202. Uh, which means I probably could have made 198, but it is what it is. There's other powerlifting competitions. I'll be stronger. I'll be weaker. Just how life goes. Uh, then we just uh, chilled. We went and grabbed some food, hung out with the homies. I watched a good amount of the meat. Uh, the environment's just fun sometimes because Barbara Gay's like such a family. Everyone's there just hanging out, helping each other, cheering each other on. Powerlifting meets are pretty cool, although... If you don't know what's going on and you're just kind of watching the lifting, it can be pretty boring. It's not much of a spectator sport, but the environment, the warm up room, the teammates, the camaraderie of the entire event is what makes powerlifting really cool. The community, everyone's cheering for everybody. No one wants uh, anyone to do poorly. So that's really fun. So uh, Connor and I like this Airbnb spot because it's downtown, even though I don't love downtown, but it's close to Whole Foods and it's close to Barber Brigade. So I uh, went to Whole Foods, got a little bit of dinner, some snacks to get my bloat on uh, because Shred's life is coming after this competition. So I want to eat up my last bit of cookies. So grab the Whole Foods cookies. We came and basically we just chilled out, uh, tried to get ready for the next day. And that was, that was kind of the first two days of the trip. Uh, again, it's just building up those processes and maybe boring, but that's just kind of what we had to do. And then, uh, get as ready as I could mentally and physically for the meet. We went to bed maybe 9.30 or so. Tomorrow we got a lift, so uh, stay tuned. That video coming soon. Uh, I'm going to bed and we're gonna chill. <laughs>